All right, we're continuing our discussion about function notation, and now we're going to move on from graphs and tables and talk about expressions. And this is the more likely thing you're going to have throughout your math careers when your function is given by an expression. So again, the first thing is we know what function notation is now. All right, we have f of x equals y, where x is our input and y is our output. All right, so the really only steps, this is really similar to just a general order of operations thing. All right, when you want to figure out f of some specific x, all right, there's going to be some number in here, so it might look like f of 2. All right, this is saying that your x value is going to be 2. So you're going to replace all the x's in your expression with the value that you want. And then after you do that, it's just order of operations. You just simplify it until you get that one output for that input. All right, so here's an example. All right, f of x equals 3 minus 2x. So the first thing we're going to do is find f of one. And f of one means we want x to be equal to one. Alright, so all it's saying is take this expression, three minus two x, and make the x one. So this is gonna be three minus two times one. Alright, that x I replaced with a one. And now the function part doesn't really matter anymore. It's just order of operations. So I do the multiplication first, and then I do the subtraction. If I can actually write the 1 there. There we go. Right. So f of 1 equals 1. So when I put in 1 into my function, I get out 1. And one thing to kind of keep in mind, this will be useful in a future learning objective, that means the point 1, 1 is going to be on the graph of this function, because when I put in 1, I get out 1. f of negative 4, nothing changes. I still am just going to replace that x with a negative 4. And you can see a lot of times, or pretty much all the time, when I plug a number in for x, I put it in parentheses so I can keep track of my negatives and things. I still do multiplication first. So if I have negative 2 times negative 4, it's going to be plus 8, positive 8, and then I can add and get 11. So when I put in negative 4, I'm going to get 11. And again, that would mean, and this isn't like important to know for right now, but just as a reminder, that would mean the point negative 4, 11 is going to be on a graph. Right, but when you're doing function notation, just replace those x's with a number in parentheses. All right, in this next example, it's important to remember that you're going to replace all of the x's with that number in parentheses. So just the x's, those x's are kind of placeholders for the inputs that you're putting in. So f of 1, oh, this shouldn't say f because we called the function g. So this should say g of 1 and g of negative 1. So g of 1, I'm going to keep the 2. That x gets replaced by a 1, keep the minus sign, that x gets replaced by a 1, and the exponent stays. All right, so basically every single time you would have written an x in the original expression, you're going to write a 1 instead. And order of operations says my exponent's going to happen first, and 1 squared is 1, then multiplication. and then subtraction. Now, so this one also comes out to 1, so when I put in 1, I get out 1. All right, negative 1, same idea, except for now instead of writing 1s, I'm going to write negative 1s. And whenever you're dealing with negatives, just remember to be careful with your negatives. So the first thing is that exponent negative 1 squared turns into positive 1. Because right, it's negative 1 times negative 1, the uh, negatives cancel out. Let me just write it. Negative 1 times negative 1. All right, so those negatives cancel out and make positive 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then subtracting negative 2 minus another 1 is negative 3. And so when I put in negative 1 into my function, I get out negative 3. All right, so the only difference between this uh, example and the previous example was to make sure that you replace every x with that number. And also remember, just to be careful with negatives, especially when you're plugging a negative into your function, just make sure you keep track of where the negatives are. All right, so now it's your turn. You got h of x, and again, I messed up here. All right, you want to find h of negative 2. All right, so you know, put, put in negative 2 into this function. And this is a solution that I got when you put in negative 2. Right, again, placing the x's with the negative 2, Exponent first, 
negative 2 squared is uh, positive 4, and then positive 4 plus negative 2 is 2. All right, so that is uh, function notation, all right, putting numbers into your expression. All right, so we're going to finish with an example. All right, one thing you'll have to do in pre-calc and calculus and all these other math classes, and we'll have to do it here too just to prepare, is when you're replacing uh, not your x with um, a number, but another variable or some type of expression. So again, the same thing is going to happen. It looks way more complicated, but the same first step is still going to happen. Whenever I change what's in the parentheses here, in this case there's an a plus h, All right, whenever I change that, that means I'm going to replace the x in my original expression with that. So again, if I think about this x as a placeholder, it gets replaced by whatever is in the parentheses. So f of a plus h is going to be 3. Instead of x, I put in the placeholder a plus h minus 1. And I mean, it's not much you can do here. You can distribute this 3. So remember, if you distribute this a multiplies by both of these things, and you're going to get 3a plus 3h minus 1. All right, not much else you can do. Right, then when you're putting a variable in for another variable, you're not going to get some nice number as your final answer. There'll still be variables and stuff. Right, but this is just something you'll have to do throughout your math career, so we should practice it now. All right, here's the one to try on your own. All right, let g of x be this expression and find g of a. And here's the solution. So g of a, you're replacing your x placeholder with an a. All right, so I'm just putting an a there. Again, not much you can do. You just can just multiply the 5 times the a to 2 minus 5a. So really all you did was change your variable name from x to a. Right, this is still something you have to do uh, from time to time. All right, if you're plugging in certain expressions or variables, All right, in this case we're just putting in a for x, so it doesn't really change much, All right, but you get that final answer. All right, so now it's time to practice. Again, this is one of the most important things in the unit because we're going to have to use it throughout the entire year. So make sure you understand how to use function notation with an expression. All right, and that way, when we're doing this throughout the rest of the year, you're not confused every single time you see something like f of 2, wondering what that means, how this is related to you know, points on your graph, and all that stuff. All right, so look over function notation, do practice, and then when you're ready, do the skill check.